Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome to another Mr. Awesome video. Today, as per the title of the video, we are going to be ranking every single boss in Donkey Kong Country Returns for the Nintendo Wii, developed by the illustrious Retro Studios. So sit tight, grab a couple bananas, subscribe for future Nintendo content just like this one, and drop a like for our like goal of 25 likes. And let's get this show on the road. Damn, in my opinion, this is the worst boss in the entire game of Donkey Kong Country Returns. And not because I used the banana juice, alright? It's just because this boss is slow and tedious. Feather Fiend is... Uh, to say the least. One thing I hate about this game is Donkey Kong's movement. It's slow and a little slippery, but it's okay because he's the leader of the bunch and we all know him well. But Donkey Kong's movement combined with this boss being so tedious and slow and repetitive is just garbage. Hear me out. You have to wait for Chicken Little here to move side to side with his giant robot chicken feet thingy thing and you gotta find a way through maneuver under its machinery to get to the other side just for chicken little over here to hit one side just to come right back and do it again it's just so tedious if you ask me i, I really don't like it and then all of a sudden he jumps and stomps on the ground and then he jumps again and then exposes his legs to some chains while i get it it's the boss I, I just don't like it. It's too slow, too tedious. The whole moving between its legs thing, no, it's not for me. I, I really couldn't do it. This is one of the bosses where I just gave up and just said, hey, banana juice this, please. It's, it's annoying. Now, there is a second phase of this boss, and it gives me serious Super Mario World vibes. But I feel like if this phase was just the overall boss, the Feather Fiend would have overall been a higher ranking than the bottom of the barrel, if you ask me. But once you get through the second phase, you can move on with your life, thankfully. It's not a fun boss at all. Uh, if anything, I'm very disappointed, especially because it this is the second to last boss from the final boss. Also, uh, <laughs> don't be like me and die in the beginning. <laughs> Alright, so for World 3, we have Stu, residing in 3-B, Ruined Roost. For this fight, you fight this bird in this pot, and all you have to do is dodge its bombs and sideswipes. It's not a bad boss at all. The bombs will help you out in defeating this poultry menace in order to break its pot, which essentially means you beat the level. Which at the end exposes his, uh, yeah. To think that this is an exotic bird that was hatched into life of destruction. This boss wasn't hard at all by any means. If anything, I felt like this could have been a World 2 boss since it was kinda easy. If anything, in my personal experience, when I finished this boss in my off-stream playthrough, I told myself, that's it? Wow. On stream, however, which, you know, if you guys don't know, I do stream on this channel, I had a harder time playing through this. And this is why I revisit bosses to get a clearer look without any type of distractions. Overall, this boss wasn't that bad, it's just a little underwhelming. World 5's Mango Ruby, that's a, that's a cool name, I, I can't lie to you, Mango Ruby, is an interesting boss. It's a pseudo-platform boss, and if anything, it reminds me of a certain Sonic Colors boss. But for Donkey Kong Country Returns, you aren't fighting the platforms, there's an actual boss, which is this snake thingy thing thing, which its name is Mango Ruby. It's possessed by the wacky pipes with a, such a weird name. <laughs> it's one of these tiki things. But within itself, the boss is easy. You just hit these switches in the platforms and bonk the boss. One of the things I really have to nitpick is the climbing of the grass. It's annoying having to jump and completely miss the grass you hold on to in order to climb. I almost wish that the controls for climbing were just a tad bit better, since, you know, you're primarily playing with a D-pad. I personally hate playing 2D games with an analog stick, but for once, I wanted to do it. It's a creative boss, I can't lie, but still. It gets especially harder when Diddy Kong's gone, because Diddy Kong has a little hover thing if you guys haven't played the game in a while. And while the same could be said for every other boss, this is different because you really have to use your platforming skills to beat this boss. You kind of need that rocket to give you the extra oomph to 
to be honest. All right, so for the fifth rank, we are in the beach part of Donkey Kong's country in World 2. We face off three crabs. These crabs are part of the scurvy crew. They're a trio of high sea scallywags who would like nothing better to pinch Kong's nose and of course his bananas. I literally read that off straight from IGN's wiki. <laughs> this boss isn't bad by any means but certainly a lot easier than most other bosses. The patterns here were a bit confusing since, you know, they're moving side to side and they can pinch up. Kind of don't know what to do, but you gotta take a risk and bonk them on their head. Once you get the hang of it, this boss is a piece of cake. You can even do a no-hit run easily. So this boss has two phases. Individually, you have to jump on their heads and then clap the ground and then bonk their bottoms. Altogether, however, you have to roll onto them, which was like, oh, that, that might be a little risky since, you know, claws and stuff. And then you have to bonk on them, which is kind of cool because you can do it in succession and sometimes get a banana coin, you know? You rinse and you repeat and you're done. Really, really fun boss. I, I see myself coming back to play this game just to revisit this boss solely. Alright, so the very first boss from Donkey Kong Country Returns is Mugly. It's the first boss, so it's not that hard. It will keep you on your toes, however. You know, this is your first foray with a Donkey Kong Country boss, and I'm pretty sure back in 2010, a lot of people were experiencing Donkey Kong Country for the first time. If I had to define this boss, it would be a side-to-side -side fight, because it, it goes from side-to-side. -side. Mugly does jump, however. You just gotta be careful, because if not, it can seriously hurt you. One thing I love about this boss is the expressions from Mugly. Very, very cartoon-like. It shows Retro Studios' cartoonish nature. I like Western developers because they have some charm to their video games. Seriously, when Mugly's eating his bananas, he just has his charm to it, and even his death animation. There's a part where if you slip up like I did, Mugly eats you and spits you out. Which to me was funny, because... <laughs> Dude, what? You don't really expect these things. This is a great tutorial boss to prepare you for the nastier bosses ahead. But honestly, it's one of the better bosses in this game, especially if you made it to almost top three. And number three, <laughs> it's a repeat of the first boss fight, which was ranked number four. Thugly, which I assume is Mugly's brother or relative, has the same moves as jumping, tackling, and Thugly also eats you. But this time around, Thugly has come more prepared, probably heard about what happened to Mugly, and got himself a little armadillo-like shell. And watch out, because that shell is hot. Tell me about it, because that, that shell has done me dirty a lot. This is what I like about this boss. It took the concept of the first one and it made it more challenging. The first one was great as it is, but it's more fleshed out here. I was really put to the test both on stream and with my recorded playthrough that I honestly had to use the banana juice for when I recorded. But don't fret, I beat it without the banana juice on stream, I just wanted to get it over with. These three phases were kind of annoying. One thing I like about both Thugly and Mugly is that they both have this horrible cursing habit where they are visibly cursing, but you can tell by the little symbols and stuff. The first boss Mugly was great, but Thugly is even greater definitely deserves to be top three. Good God, this is a boss I've actually screamed at. The mole train from World 4 is truly something else. I really, really don't like this mole. Its name is Mole Miner Max. Such a generic name. It's possessed by a banjo, Tiki. And what I would say, the most interesting boss fight I've probably played in a Donkey Kong game thus far. This boss combines two tedious things from the Donkey Kong Country franchise. Two tedious things that I personally call tedious because I hate them. Bosses and minecart levels. For starters, I really don't like minecart levels in Donkey Kong Country. I hate them. It's just all about timing and you gotta have patience and I hate them. I just, just sorry. I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't like them, but I really don't like them. They're fun to pass, don't get me wrong. You feel that satisfaction when you do, but still. Uh, you know? For this boss, when the banjo takes over Mole Miner Max, you have to ride on his train filled with our juicy, juicy bananas from our boy Donkey Kong's horde. The disrespect. You're out here dodging pickaxes and bombs from the other moles. And well, 
it's kind of challenging. And well, it's challenging because you have to make sure you have enough hearts to make it to the mo section, which they play whack-a-mole with you for like four rounds. I've noticed with this playthrough, I was not only was I nastier than I was when I streamed it, but the level kept giving me hearts. Where were the hearts during this stream? I kept dying and dying and <laughs> it was really annoying. Despite the fact that I hate the minecart and boss combo, I had a lot of fun with this boss. This boss, as per every minecart level, felt really satisfying to beat in the end. Nowhere did I say, yo, I give up in this and pull my controller away. No, actually I felt very invested in beating it. And even when I lost at the very end when I actually faced the Max himself, I said, hey, let's just do it again. The one thing I kind of find interesting is this whole whack-a-mole section. It's not only prevalent with the moles, it's also prevalent with Max himself. It's interesting, and I, I hated it. <laughs> so typically for these videos, I rarely put final bosses as the number one spot. But man, was Tiki Tong deserving of this spot. It's insane to me how this boss is not only a boss, it's also a full-blown level 2. This felt really good to play, especially when you master the rocket, which, mind you, the rocket levels were kind of annoying, but this right here, when you're just going up the volcano with the rocket, it just felt really satisfying, and it really amped you up for this boss fight. Now, I shouldn't be ranking this level with the boss fight, but I just had to throw that in there. It really had you souped up for what was coming ahead. One thing I liked about this boss, in comparison to every other boss put together, is the amount of cutscenes. Nintendo games don't have much of a story, but for Donkey Kong Country, kind of did have a, a little bit of a story. It's kind of cool seeing what the Kongs go through in their adventures. And, you know, you see their personality and stuff shine through with these cutscenes. But enough about that, let's talk about the boss, Tiki Tong. It's the granddaddy of all Tikis, and it's about time we face him. We've gone through a, our fair share of BS. Tiki Tong has two phases, one with its hands, which is kind of creepily made with hot bananas and its Tiki brethren, and the other phase where you face it all alone. When you fight the hands, they have these patterns. They can be very tedious, but once you do, they're easy to dodge. You duck, jump, and roll. Honestly, a lot of fun once you get the hang of it. And it's cool because there's a part of the boss where the hand slaps you from the top, and it reminds me personally of playing with my family that one hand slapping game you know the ones where there's fake out and stuff and you, you're not trying to get your hand slapped it's terrifying and it just brings back memories to me all in all the hands phase is a cool phase and then there's the second phase where it's just tiki tong himself again with the super mario world vibes you know the flaming fires and stuff i don't blame retro for using this because you know super mario world is the greatest game of all time but I'll be honest, this boss is generous. Tiki Tong gives you burning hearts, which you have to tame with your donkey breath, or you have to just tough it out until the fire puts out itself. In the end, once you beat the boss, you feel satisfied because of everything you went through prior to facing it, especially because of the level. A lot of fun. All right, thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you guys have it. Let's hit that like goal of 25. Shout out to the members for supporting the channel monthly and subscribe because we're about to cover a whole lot of Nintendo for the month of February and March. And I kind of don't want you guys to miss my live streams and stuff because they're a lot of fun. Shout out to the members for supporting the channel monthly. You guys put that pizza on my pepperoni. Shout out to the people wearing the Mr. Awesome merch. You guys look amazing. And shout out to you. Yes, you, the audience member for making it to the very end. I owe you a couple bananas. Thank you. As always, stay safe and stay golden.